If the McDonald Ranges are the heart of Australia, the Fink River is the main artery. Said by many to be the oldest watercourse in the world, it has supported life and shaped the landscape over millions of years. By the time the first humans arrived, the Fink flowed mostly underground, but it remained the major source of water for thousands of kilometres around. It was called by the West Narrator Lera Penta, which means in many ways the river of salt, because much as you like to see it as a big fresh water, in drought times it gets more and more brackish, so it becomes quite briny in places, as well as just, if you taste it, it's a bit salty. The Fink was named after one of the backers of explorer John McDool Stewart, who saw its pools of water glinting in the sun when he was approaching the site of the present-day Aboriginal township of Fink, or Apachula. But it was first explored in depth just over a decade later by Ernest Giles, who quickly understood its importance. It drains an enormous area of central Australia, and on the parallels of 24, 25 and 26 degrees, no other stream exists between it and the Murchison and the Ashburton, a distance of nearly 1,100 miles, and thus it will be seen as the only central Australian river. And then you have a man uh, called Charles Chewings who examined every tributary and followed it down. You see this big funnel, it's like a gigantic funnel leaving down to Lake Eyre. So it's actually part of the Lake Eyre Basin, though it never reaches Lake Eyre these days. I think it's very difficult to understand that the, the Western McDonald Ranger were once as high as the Himalayas and the Fink was cutting down into it. When humans arrived on the scene, the Fink was given new roles. For Aboriginal people, it was part of a vital trade route, with ochre products heading north and pearl shell coming south. It was a reliable source of food and water in dry times and often a great place to fish. One of its waterholes, Illamorta, was considered one of the most sacred places of the Aranda. When the new settlers came, they were also drawn to the Fink. But unlike the nomadic Aranda, they created permanent settlements. Lutheran missionaries endured intense hardships to travel across the world and transplant German architecture and German Christianity into a mission on the banks of the Fink they called Hermannsburg. Upstream, Glen Helen became the most successful cattle station in the Western McDonald's and the missionaries took on the role of advocates for Aboriginal people as conflicts on the frontier continued. From an outpost at Boggy Hole, one of the Fink's largest permanent waterholes, the infamous Constable Wilshire conducted deadly forays in an attempt to stop cattle killing by Aboriginal people. He was eventually tried for murder and, although acquitted, never returned. But in the story of Fink, Wilshire's escapades amount to less than a drop in the river of time. Fink River, for its ancient millions of years ago to modern human times, has been the access route for animals, birds and then humans and of course it's both the access route into the ranges and the route out of the ranges so it became the main thoroughfare for many Aboriginal people over thousands of years as well as the first pastoralists taking their stock down uh, south to the train head which was at Udendatta in northern South Australia. In later years, the Fink in full force would undermine the railway and create derailments that held up mail, food supplies and human traffic to and from the centre, until eventually the railway was rebuilt. And in 1988, it almost washed away the homestead at Glen Helen. The Fink retains its legendary status in Central Australia, lending its name to an annual cross-country motorbike race that attracts riders from around the world. For travellers, the Fink and the gorges it has cut through the red rock of the McDonnell Ranges are a continual source of wonder and inspiration. <laughs>